Oh, hello there. Welcome to the review segment of our show where we take you through the newspapers. We'll tell you what's uh, online as well on myjawline.com and go international. Joseph Akable is here in studio. Joseph Opoku Gato, our parliamentary correspondent, will be joining us via Zoom. Uh, but before we even do that, I have a special birthday dedication. I missed this last Friday, so let's do it this way. A belated uh, birthday to Yao Dansokwakwa of Madonna School, Kofridia. And a belated one, because last Friday was your birthday, which I missed. Yao Buahin Kwakwa of St. Peter's Senior High School in Kwetia, Kwewu. Um, your dad says he loves you so much. And that was to you as you both celebrated your birthday. I hope that you had fun. All right, now, before we get down to the newspapers, let's give you the weather updates. Let's tell you how the weather will be like throughout the day today so you can watch out and avoid going through areas that will probably get flooded when it rains, as we saw on Saturday. So the weather will be on the screen shortly whilst we... Okay, there you have it. So we're just going to open it up a bit so that you can uh, pay attention to it. So it's going to be largely cloudy this morning, later in the afternoon in many parts of the country. A flower, a crack, Kaswa, Cape Coast, Takrade. Let's look at Kaswa critically because that's uh, one of the areas of concern. It's going to be cloudy this morning, uh, cloudy later in the afternoon as well, which means potential rains in those areas where it is going to be cloudy today. Uh, so pack appropriate tools as you leave home uh, because there's a possibility of rain and uh, thunderstorm, like they put it. Accra, Aflao, Kaswa, Cape Coast, Takwadi, Exim, Hoko, Freudia, Akemoda, Kumasi, Obwasi, Takwa, Sefi, Bekwai, Ketekrachi, Kentampo, Go, Susunyain, Techiman, Yendi, Tamale, Bole, Damongo, Bolgatanga, Nalerugu, and Wa. All these areas, possibility of rain, uh, because it's largely going to get cloudy this morning. Get an umbrella before you leave home. And that's the weather updates. Uh, we will talk about the flats on the show uh, properly. But Joseph, did you experience any of this? Because we were in Kumasi. Yes, and uh, it was raining when I was heading towards that side. But mm -hmm. I've seen uh, pictures and videos from uh, Kaswa, specifically the Malam area, mm. uh, where the entire road was, was I mean, flooded. And it's very scary. I saw a vehicle that had uh, more than 50% of its parts covered and was still moving. Ooh. And I was really scared for the driver in the car. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate we have to be discussing this again, but it yeah. is a problem that needs to be solved. So uh, This is, you know, discussing it, like we say, it's a broken record. We talk about it each time it happens. But is anybody listening? Is anybody trying to fix something? Or are we just playing with it? Well, it's not in doubt that people are listening. Neither is it in doubt that people who ought to listen are aware of what is also happening. Mm. But it is a case of us not being able to just find our, our solutions, uh, sustainable solutions that resolve the issue once and for all. And quite recently, uh, I've, I was, someone sent me a photograph of a newspaper. Uh, it's a telegraphic report from the 1960s that had uh, Ghana's first president, uh, Osaji Fudok Takami Krumah, going on a tour of flood-affected areas. And if you read that story, <laughs> you can substitute the dates, you can substitute the names, and the communities are still the same areas, parts of Accra. The only thing that changes is the fact that it's, a, it's an old story. I mean, everything is the same. Everything is the same. People's homes flooded, they had to be moved. Uh, there were issues about the fact that people are built in waterways, there were issues about the lack of drainage. It's, it's just the same issue, I mean. But it's a serious matter and we need to uh, find a solution to it because the fact of the matter is that we have tried, we've invested money, and we are still getting it wrong. And what is strange is we are looking at the Malam Road. It's, it's a major road. And quite recently, if you recall, there was this project that they did. Mm -hmm. They constructed a culvert mm -hmm. across the road. That caused yeah, traffic yeah. more than a month. And the understanding was that this was what was going to resolve the matter. And yet, afterwards, not. it's not the solution. So. Yeah. Okay, well, let's welcome Joseph Opoku Gakpo. Uh, good morning to you, Joseph. Mavi, good morning. How are you doing? How oh, are I'm you good. Doing? I'm great. How are you? 
Nice. I'm also doing well. You guys were in Kumasi. It was a big celebration. I missed out. Oh, we were because our producer got married on Saturday. It was a very beautiful ceremony. It was a happy day. Atmosphere was fantastic. I brought some visuals along with me, so I'll be sharing it. Let's see that in details. Now it's like a blaze then. Now that's a custom. Is it a roll call or something? Uh, yes, I'm the one setting the timetable and drawing the timeline. You know, I hate asking this question. Now that you put the spotlight on Akable, how about you? Can we talk about the flat? It's a big issue. In fact, it came up in Parliament. <laughs> how convenient. Just last week, when the water resources, you know, the works and housing minister was in Parliament. And there were questions to him, you know, from the media about what is being done to deal with this problem going forward. And his response was that, it requires very big money to the extent that the regular budget of the ministry will not be able to fix it. And so uh, he floated this idea, which Mr. Tachia says he's taking to cabinet, that there should be the, you know, he, he said it before, the infrastructure bond, and that if on a regular day, government would float bonds to raise money to fix the economy, same should be done for infrastructure, so that then the nation's huge infrastructure deficit can be fixed once and for all, and then the money we paid over time. Um, we wait to see. So if, that's the solution. Time. We need yeah. lots of money. Which the state doesn't have at the moment. Wow. And so then we need to find very innovative means of raising the money, which um, mm. hasn't, uh, you know, gone through the necessary processes in order to then become a reality in terms of Interesting. the best innovative process to raise well. money. So I will live with it for some time to come. Yeah, this matter is on our table today. So let's uh, do the newspapers. Uh, we'll come back to this issue. Joseph? Let me start from the front page of the Daily Guide. It says, Torrential rain batters Accra. It has a photograph of a flooded area with some individuals moving in the water. How NPP MP was murdered also on the front page. And Volta rebels adopt a new strategy. And go to court if you have issues with results. It's coming from the Asante Hine. Uh, the back page of the Daily Guide says, Akono explains Mali poor show mm. pledges to make amends mm. today. Charlie had uh, break already. You know, I, I, was, I, had to go, <laughs> I had to go and see the dentist around that time. And I, I, I was contemplating whether to watch the match or go. And I decided to go to the dentist. Uh, by the time I was done, it was 3-0. I was like, okay, goodness, if I hadn't gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he's been explaining. He says, uh, what, what is he saying here? Shall I ask for explanation? Yeah. He says, I don't blame the players for the defeat, but the key thing which resulted in our loss to Mali was that the team was not organized. The players didn't know themselves because most of them were debutants and it was even the first time they were playing together. And so we trained for only two days and there was lack of understanding as well. Okay, so that's the explanation. Mali didn't play any anything extraordinary, but they were organized side. Which okay, that one, it doesn't, that one there, it doesn't matter. I think we should concentrate on our side. So we yeah, didn't, says, they didn't get they enough, put, enough. Says that we put, they didn't play any ball like that. Ah. Mm -hmm. So the two days campaign, it didn't count there. Eh? So now they've had uh, one more day and another ah. day. So we'll see what will happen oh, today. Oh, Charlie, black stars. Mm, but that's what uh, CK Akono has been saying. You know, the interesting thing about CK Akono was that he used to be the coach of Kotoko. And he was sacked and replaced with Max Okunidu. Then he wanted to pick him to coach Black Stars. But we are patient. We, Which we people? Uh, the Ghana, the Ghana FA. <laughs> Let's do the Daily Graphic News. Yeah. Stop doing Kotoko. We're talking about the Black Stars. Okay. The Daily Graphic newspaper front page. Use legal means to challenge election results. That's uh, Otumfo or say to, to the second making that call. It's an honor to edit Daily Graphic Wednesday. That's the NSMQ quiz mistress, Dr. Effa Kaufman. She will be in charge of the graphic this Wednesday's edition. And here's the big story. The new trade facilitation platform, the integrated customs management system, has significantly impacted government revenue mobilization, even in the midst of COVID-19. Uh, that's according to the Commissioner of the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Story, uh, who says they raked in 3.7 billion revenue in three months. In the center spread, there's a news feature, policing in face of COVID-19. Uh, what I see is really professional, all in uh, gloves with their mask on, keeping some distance. And I'm talking about the police as they interact uh, with some drivers uh, and passengers as well. But it is not always like that uh, if you meet them. But what is here is pretty good. See?
pretty professional. We hope that all of them would behave like this. Uh, Backpage FDA rolls out safe disposal of expired drugs. President commissioned 6.5 megawatt solar plants at Laura. From the graphic, we do the finder. Front page of the finder. Dr. Baumia assures Asantin of MPP's commitment to peaceful campaign and elections. Ekufuada commissions 5.1 million Hamili Hapa water supply projects. Upper West gets 2,163 projects. There's a good breakdown uh, of what's happening in that region. Payment to investors of defunct fund management companies has commenced. Uh, and then 17 presidential aspirants file nomination to contest in December 7 elections. 17, 1, 7. Uh, let's do the business and financial times real quick. Front page, Cocoa Board to spend $250 million on farm rehabilitation program. Spend wisely, broaden task base uh, to close huge fiscal gap. That's the World Bank uh, making that call. Fiscal deficit is tipped to hit double digits. Economy still at high risk of debt distress. Kofi Ejepon Boateng receives CBE award for philanthropy. And Upper West resident welcomes solid waste plants at Berisi. Okay, there are other... Uh, financial stories in the Business and Financial Times. Do you have one more paper? Yes, uh, the Ghanaian Times. Uh, okay. The Ghanaian Times says, uh, Floods wreak havoc, wreak havoc in Accra, uh, destroy property, render many homeless. And uh, another one here says, We can't access NBSSI funds. I want Ghana to be cleanest city in Africa by end of my tenure. That's coming from the president. So we have about two months, two or three months to go. A CRI applauds winners, organizers of science and math quiz competition, also on the front page. The back page here says, Ghana gas to build LPG bottling plant at Axim, and President inaugurates Laura's 6.5 megawatt solar power system, also on the back page of the Ghanaian Times. Uh, on page three of the Ghanaian Times has this story about drama in court as mechanic is jailed for defilement. And so we are told that uh, a mechanic was found guilty of defiling a 12-year-old girl in a vehicle parked at a mechanic shop at oh. Dakuman. Uh, the story goes on to say that uh, he was found guilty by, in a court presided over by uh, Mrs. Christina Khan on the charge of defilement at the end of the trial. He had pleaded guilty and asked for mitigation as he maintained that he did not defile the victim. But soon after the judgment was pronounced in the courtroom, a test stepfather raised his hand in the air saying he and his family had paid 3,000 cities to the complainant and yet his son was convicted. Okay. So did he do it or not? <laughs> but that he said they've paid 3,000. I'm, I'm not getting that. Okay, so the 3,000 was for what? I have no idea because a criminal matter is between the Republic and you, the individual who has committed the crime. And Maybe so, he should have paid the 3,000 to the states. Well, it will still have no effect. <laughs> I know. I know. But I'm just, I'm just like, okay, so he... The, because you said the guy pleaded okay, not so guilty. He some said he didn't do it, some right? Some explanation here. He uh -huh. says that, that on the 3,000 cities. Mm -hmm. The father said that he and the complainant discussed that they were going to give some of the money to the prosecutor and the police commander. <laughs> Surprisingly, the complainant admitted collecting the money when a trial judge asked him whether the accusation was true. The complainant also told the court that they were approached by the convict stepfather in relation to collect 3,000 cities to defray any cost incurred as a result of the matter. You see that disagreement. Uh, One says the money was to end the issue. The other said the money was for the cost of the medical bills and okay. the, the medical bills and the other issues that had come up. Okay. Anyways, well, but uh, the story is that. But um, there was some three thousand paid. Yeah, it's not yeah. in that. The, the complainant they didn't decided deny it to all. give out the money. <laughs> it doesn't the, take anything away the, from the, the judge. Was is quoted as saying that I don't take bribe here. <laughs> I don't accept thank you gifts. Don't give money to anyone in court to be given to anybody. I am paid for the job I am doing. If you pay any money to anyone, that person is going to use it for himself. Of course, yeah. <laughs> the person will use it for himself. But that is the, the, the story there. Yeah, Charlie, I mean. bold move, eh? Mm. Well. Uh, jo uh, Joseph Apoku Gapo, uh, you'd come in short. Have you done the daily guide? Yes, we did a okay. front daily guide. So let's there. do this, uh, this uh, the bit about this. Uh, you know, there's a story in the Ghanaian publisher newspaper. You find it's on the front page seven. Face disqualification as EC prepares to announce qualified presidential aspirants. So apparently seven of them who filed their nominations to contest uh, the elections uh, out of the 17 will be disqualified. 
The number is, however, likely to be pruned down as information suggests some of the political parties would possibly fail uh, the scrutiny test the Electoral Commission has put in place to study their nomination forms. The technical information technology teams tasked to scrutinize the presidential nomination forms would submit their report to the EC today, and the Ghanaian publisher is reliably informed that the commission would disqualify at least seven presidential aspirants representing smaller parties that are only active in a run-up to elections. Well, we'll see. If they cut down seven, then it means they'll be left with ten. Uh, but let's see what happens today. Joseph Opoku Gakpo, you've been listening to the stories that uh, we've been highlighting. Any story that you know you want to talk about? Speaking of the smaller parties, you know the debate for the minority parties? Uh, the joy money debate is coming on on the 15th of october uh, that of the independent presidential candidates was a very interesting one mm -hmm. from the uh, upsa so we are looking forward to that of the smaller political parties when we will have the likes of um, uh, the cpp's candidates the pnc's candidates and others uh bridges jabanuku and co all uh you know coming face so look forward to that um, the Koko Rehabilitation Program, we told the dedicated for 250 million Ghana cities. Repeated mm -hmm. on yearly basis, we get the figures being put out there about how much money is actually being invested in that. Just to where exactly the rehabilitation is happening, um, you know, we, we probably should commission Kwete Nate to look into that. Kwete has been doing a lot of very good investigative Koko Focused pieces. And, you know, let's, let, let's probably try and sanitize the space because um, obviously once the trees are beyond 25 years and we have the situation that's having to do with them being diseased, some of them you completely need to cut down the tree and um, the farmers will need some form of support in order to do the rehabilitation. Unfortunately, uh, the money is announced for it and we don't see the end as far as this. Okay. So um, we wait to see how things develop. Mm. Um, Interesting stories in the news. Yeah, uh, and you know, they say that, and you'll be familiar with this, uh, currently western, southern, and eastern cocoa regions uh, are considered endemic areas with most farms, uh, according to the story, experiencing low yields due to being deceased. The program after three years is expected to propel Ghana's production to cover one million metric tons per annum. So I guess the issue is after three years, we shouldn't be talking about this issue. Yeah, but, if, but if I recall some two years ago, they were talking about getting beyond the million metric tons. It's interesting that it is it's coming back once again. Uh, I don't know, just were we able to achieve that target? Hmm. Since we achieved it um, during the time of um, John Mahama, I think in 2011 or 2012, um, since then, you've not seen the figures shoot up to that level again. Um, over the years. It goes back to the point that, and for me, if those who are producing it find it to be profitable business, they'll continue to invest in it and we'll see the tonnage go up. But the larger point is that um, what's the point in producing it in excess and having it so much on the market and the price of the commodity keeps falling and you are earning less of it? There's a possibility that if Ghana and Ivory Coast strategize better and do the things we need to do, it could probably keep production levels not exactly at a very high level, but still make good money out of it. But more importantly, we produce and export the large chunk of it. And the companies in the Netherlands and the UK are the ones who are making the bigger sums of it. And here in Ghana, although we produce the raw material, we are earning like 6%, 10% of the total value when it comes to the industry. Unless we take the necessary steps to say we are increasing processing, we don't control the market by ourselves. We, would we can even produce two million tons a year, mm. and the economy will not be all the good for it. But others will be the ones who benefit. Yeah, uh, we're going to jump into one more issue, but let's get myjawline.com ready so we can review what's uh, on our page today. Uh, the Takwa and Swaim issue, which was in our AM news, the the. The, the bit about the underlining issue, Joseph Opokakwe, you were clarifying that over the weekend, not being political necessarily, uh, but this is more of a chieftaincy dispute. Uh, but it's interesting that it's still around a man who was in the news not too long ago uh, with Charles Bissu. And I guess that's why a lot of people were drawing in the internal political uh, angle. 
Um, Joseph, what, what are you picking? Is this strictly a chieftaincy matter or it's got some internal politics in there? So um, our very good friend, uh, the Takwan Suleiman, he joined in you know, the You know, he used to be a chief mm -hmm. and then he abdicated and decided to venture into politics. And it's like the problem in the area is that um, there are some others who want to get onto the chief county title and lay hold of it. And there is a perception that uh, he is in support of um, a different candidate, although the indication is that um, the chief county has left a gate, if you could put it so, and move to the other gate. And so the claim is that it's the other gate who are fighting among themselves. And uh, the check that I did showed that apparently um, the man who wants to install himself as chief had stepped out into the community with an entourage, allegedly including a number of staff, and they had gone to the MP's residence. And uh, in the course of them walking around, there's a young man who happens to be the MP's nephew, I think, was uh, videoing the, 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 the guy who wants to be a chief and his entourage, and the staff has caught him ordered the young guy to stop the filming and it looks like the young guy didn't and they were upset about it they moved in to attack the young guy there were a number of people in the mp's room who tried defending the young guy and then they were all assaulted in the course of it you know with the wounds and all um, we are told one person has actually been arrested in connection with this as to how far you go we wait to see but it's been lingering for a while now just a little over a month ago there was again the complaint that that same uh, house, that same neighborhood, there had been an attack on the MP by the other gate as well. And it's like it's a back and forth thing. The MP side will appear to trust the police in the area and their capacity to change the situation. And in fact, some time ago, there was a video that emerged on social media of the MP directly confronting the district police commander and accusing him of being bought by some other people in the constituency and all. And so it uh, looks like we need to pay attention to what is happening there beyond just the politics and all. Yeah. The, the as well. I'm, I'm told it's gone as far as to the regional house of chiefs and aspects of the matter has gone to court. But then again, the point is we need to clearly draw the line between what exactly is happening mm. and be clear in our minds that in this particular case, it's chief country related. And that bit of it has to be done. Yeah. Well, the police commander will be on our show uh, this morning. So we'll try and deal with the criminal aspect of it. If you would be able to get the MP as well, mm. maybe not. Because repeatedly he's accused the police commander of a number of things. Mm. So I think, yeah. it, I think it's, it's quite unfortunate. And, and, and Joseph makes the point that, I mean, this is an MP that, I mean, quite recently has been involved in one issue or the other. And so. Uh, we just hope that the police is able to get to the bottom of this particular matter. I've seen photographs uh, of the incidents, not the bled ones we put on our, our screens in terms of the news this morning, the actual ones. And I couldn't watch. It's, 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 it's crazy. I couldn't watch. It's, it's quite unfortunate that uh, I don't know how I, I get worried. I, I wonder how a human being is able to inflict such injury on a fellow human being, use a cutlass to slash someone's head, cut deep and oh goodness. Yeah, I couldn't watch. Let's do my joyaligncom real quick before we, we we wrap up. And and Joseph, tomorrow, God willing, we will talk about uh, Ambrose Derry appearing before Parliament, uh, and then we will talk about you know all the other issues that the MPs are worried about. Uh, but I must say, with Ross independent candidature after pleas by Ekufwado or Chihine and some others, well, this is hair. Uh, I must say, saying all that uh, because, you know, she addressed uh, a press conference and she said, oh, she didn't file because different persons had spoken to her, including the president, your Cheney, and I think some pastors or so. And that's why uh, she, she isn't going. But she also talked about how she was unhappy with the primaries, the results, and wanted a recount, and that didn't happen. Uh, so, And then, of course, there are other... Uh, stories related to the elections and this one mali's transitional president thanks the kufwado for his role in resolving political on pass as you well know our president is the chairman of ECOWAS, and this issue uh, has been one that he's been at the center of uh, with that high profile meeting 
that took place in Ghana not long ago. A Nigerian government bows to pressure, uh, disbands SARS. This is an issue in Nigeria, but that has also been linked to Ghana because some Nigerian residents in Ghana, oh, well, they came to Ghana and they had some positive experience with our police. And so whilst they were talking about how unprofessional what they have in their country was, they were sharing yeah, the positive the I'm not, I'm not saying that, sorry, Wally. The story, Wally. Okay, the story well. is that they were, <laughs> Nigerians were giving Ghana police fans for a good job done. Okay. So you are doing a story. A wrong, good wrong, summary. Wrong. Yes, <laughs> I was just... that's the story. I mean, and if you've seen the answers, the videos that has gone on, the way that you, you have, you'll be clear in your mind, those cannot be policemen beating people up all over. I saw a video of them chasing some, uh, a lady who was driving some, with some gentlemen sit seated behind the car, some of the protesters. They were chasing them and pouring water and they had to jump off their car and fall on the road. So they were commending the Ghana police service because they had been in the country. I haven't said anything different from what you're saying. No, Mine I'm, was I'm, a bit long and winding. Oh, okay. Yours was more straightforward. Uh, more direct, yeah. yeah. But listen, it's when you hear such stories and you see those things, you know that this can never happen in Ghana, even though some things do happen in Ghana. But I not, agree with you. But, but such things won't happen. I agree. I thought Joseph Obukaku smiling. Just 30 seconds on this and we are gone. Some of those things can never happen in Ghana. I haven't really seen police shoot people over there. But the more important thing is that, unfortunately, the, the, the real people they should be dealing with, they always are uh, able to deal with them as they ought to, including... Those, for example, who attacked the MP and killed him over the weekend, you know, and then they end up um, turning the anger on other people. But specifically on that, Professor Michael Kwe will be at the residence of um, a Kohefwa a little later today to go okay. see the family alongside uh, the leaders of parliament. And repeatedly, the call is that the police should get to the bottom of this and bring the perpetrators. Mm. All right, Joseph Abuku Gako. Thank you. We will see you tomorrow, God willing. And then, of course, you also give us the, the updates. As you've just mentioned, the speaker going to the Infantiman constituency, to the family of the Infantiman member of parliament who was sadly killed last Friday. Joseph Akable here. Yes, I'm right here. There's some interesting sports content that Uriko is bringing. They've had an interview with uh, the father of uh, Thomas Party. He's been explaining... Uh, the, what influenced his decision to join Arsenal and how, nice. uh, even though he wanted to play uh, Champions League football, which Arsenal will not offer him this season, he explained uh, the fact that he urged his son on to get into Arsenal because if they are not in the Champions League, then get them into the Champions League so that you can also play oh. for them. And so it's oh, so that's the task. Yeah, that's the task. Oh, I so can't we'll wait. From, uh, party after party. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's all coming up. And you know, Nadal backed in one huge one. Uh, as well, yesterday, uh, the French Open, Rico and will bring us all those updates, including how badly we performed with that friendly when Mali. Stay with us.